Um, I want to introduce to you our moderator today, uh, Un Yang. Un anchors news for today, uh, the number one rated morning news show in Washington, for which she has won an Emmy Award. She joined News 4 as the general assignment reporter specializing in covering breaking news for News 4, presumably weather events as well. Yeah, lots of weather. A lot of weather <laughs> events. Uh, before joining News 4, Yang worked at the National Geographic Channel and WUSA here in Washington. And most importantly, she's the mother of three young kids. Three children. So it's personal for her. Please join me in welcoming Un Yang. Thank you so much. <laughs> Stephen, thank you. Thank you for that introduction and for kicking off what promises to be an exciting and informative day. And as Stephen mentioned, this is personal to me. All this information, uh, he talked about the culture shift. That's stuff. I'm like really in the middle of it right now, in the trenches. Uh, so I'm happy to be here. Um, good morning, everyone, and welcome to the 2018 Conference of the Family Online Safety Institute, FOSI. Uh, again, I'm Un Yang. I'm the morning anchor uh, at NBC4, the local NBC station in Washington, D.C. My day starts when you should be fast asleep, like REM sleeping. My alarm clock goes off at 2.15. Um, and so why you, I know everyone's like, gasp! Um, so while you might know me as the person who brings you breaking news overnight and developments, I'm also the mom of a uh, fourth grader, a sixth grader, and an eighth grader. So I'm an avid consumer of technology, and my kids are also becoming avid consumers of technology. I'm very pleased to be a part of this conference um, and really interested on in how to promote online safety for families and hoping to bring some of today's learning into my own home as well. Uh, today, FOSI is releasing a new public policy research study on online safety across the generations which explores how both parents and seniors think about online safety concerns for themselves and their families and what steps they're taking to protect themselves. So this new report examines how Americans of different generations, of different backgrounds, feel about technology in their lives, as well as how families connect uh, through technology and learn together. And to explain the methodology and the study and discuss some of these key findings, please welcome Jay Campbell and Abigail Davenport from Heart Research Associates. Thanks for being here. Thank you. So, so let's start with how you conducted this study. Sure, and thank you. Um, so uh, we're really pleased to be here and have the opportunity to do this survey again uh, for FOSI. This time we not only surveyed parents of connected kids, but we also talked to seniors who we defined as Americans age 62 and over. We started out with exploratory research uh, focus groups to kind of hear how they're thinking and talking about using the internet and technology. And then we did surveys of each of those audiences, which included oversamples of low income uh, low-income individuals, Hispanics and African Americans, so that we could be sure to have enough interviews, robust samples of those groups to look and do a deep dive there. Um, and uh, this is unique because we are looking at sort of the intergenerational focus here in the research and trying to understand not just how parents are navigating the opportunities and challenges that uh, technology and the internet presents for their kids, but also how that's playing out through multiple generations and families and the role that parents are playing both in helping their kids but also in assisting their parents. Okay, so. thank you. All right, Jace, let's start with the seniors and what you found out sure. about the seniors who are online and who aren't online. So um, if I can forward this, we have, and of course, we can all appreciate, there we go, the irony of technology not working. Um, uh, we interviewed uh, online, uh, 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 on the phone, 700 seniors, and we found that 80% of them are online presently. 80%. Um, uh, go online at least occasionally, um, but that a majority go online on a daily basis, 53%. 20% uh, say that they never go online. And the, that group of 20%, that one in five who don't go online are entirely distinct uh, as, a, as a population. They are on average older um, than, than seniors who do go online. A majority are over the age of 75. They are more likely to be African American and Latino, so a higher proportion minority. They're far less educated. 62% uh, have no more than a high school degree. And 
almost half of them are low income compared to only 21% of seniors who do go online. So there's an enormous income uh, differential there. And that, w that probably does make a big difference on who has even access to the online for the senior Certainly. population. Certainly. And what are the top concerns you heard from seniors who are online in terms of online safety? They have a lot of the same concerns that the rest of us have, uh, <laughs> which is not a huge surprise. Yeah. Um, sort of top among them are identity theft, um, sort of is head and shoulders above everything else. Um, but things that are in that vein are also of a major concern. So um, financial theft uh, and financial hacking is something that a lot worry about. Um, viruses, just this sort of standard problem that we all have to face, malware and viruses, are pretty significant concerns. The interesting thing, though, is even those seniors who say, you know, they feel like they do a pretty good job of protecting themselves online, are concerned about these things at the same level as those who are not. So just being vigilant doesn't seem to be quite enough as far as seniors are concerned. What does make a difference is the amount of time they've been online. The more experienced uh, seniors, those who have been online for 15 years or more, are far less worried, still concerned, but not nearly as much as those who are newer to the online world. So it seems like exposure, experience really does ultimately make a difference. But do those seniors, and are they taking steps to protect themselves? They, they absolutely the tools, are. They know what to do? They absolutely are. And they are uh, taking the steps that uh, are appropriate to be taken. In point of fact, almost every senior we talk to who's online does at least one of these six things that we can see up on screen here uh, that we asked about. Um, and almost half of them do it two or more. Um, most common are the, uh, strong passwords, which we always are told we have to have uppercase, lowercase symbols. They, they do that. Um, uh, close behind are uh, holding different passwords for different accounts and using that antivirus protection software. Far less likely are things like multi-factor uh, authentication. About one in four do that. Um, and ditto for um, uh, using privacy settings on social media. So some are still doing it, but not nearly as many as probably should be. And you mentioned that their concerns are similar to the rest of the population mm -hmm. who's online. What about the benefits that they've identified from using technology and being online? Highly active um, is what I would say about online seniors. Uh, we asked about a number of different apps, a number of different services that are uh, activities that can be done online. Um, large majorities do uh, the top ones that you can see here. Um, navigation services are sort of head and shoulders above everything else. We heard in the focus group that we did with seniors that they love Waze and they love Apple I love Maps. Waze. I, we all love Waze, <laughs> we all love Apple Maps, um, and that was something that was particularly um, important for them. But uh, using social media, online banking, uh, just regular shopping, these are all things that seniors are doing regularly. Things that they're not doing uh, in as great numbers, but there's still a lot of interest in are things related to health, for instance, um, wearing monitoring devices that are connected online, um, uh, communicating with health professionals online. Those are things that uh, about one out of three, and also unrelated, um, purchasing groceries online, about one in three seniors say that they would be interested in doing that, though they are not currently doing it now. All right. And what about the seniors in terms of the demographics? Abigail mentioned the survey was a wide range of demographics. What difference did you see when you were doing the research? Um, I would say that, uh, interestingly, um, African American and Latino seniors spend more time online than, than white seniors do, about an average of one to two hours more per week. Um, overall, 18 hours per week is what seniors say they spend, white seniors say they spend online. It goes up about an hour um, for African Americans and about another hour for Latinos. Um, but uh, beyond that, uh, the, uh, other than the fact that um, those seniors who are not online are, are more likely to be in those minority populations, once you get online, Seniors who are African American or Latino behave in pretty much the same way that, that uh, white seniors do and hold all the same concerns um, and uh, are just as active uh, um, uh, as, as white seniors are. So there's not a, a lot of differentiation there. Oh, okay, and what about seniors? Are they promoting online safety to the younger generation and, and other people who are using online? Are they kind of passing along that message? Absolutely they are. Um, we found a majority, 53%, say that they have these discussions with younger people in their families, like you need to be safe online. This is something <laughs> that's important. Um, even those who are not online, those seniors who are not online, 40% or so have those conversations. Um, uh, so it seems that whether they're online or not, they're engaged enough in the sort of debate um, and the uh, situation for online world 
that they can have these discussions with their family. And Abigail's going to talk a little bit more about the intergenerational nature of, of some of this, but it, it clearly is coming through. All right, well, shifting our conversation over to Abigail, who's, sure. who's focusing on the parenting part of it. Um, are, are parents saying that technology is making their jobs easier? because I find it very difficult to manage the technology in my house for myself and for my kids. Right, well I think uh, what we find is that uh, when, when we talk to parents in the focus groups, they talk about things that are easier and things that are harder, mm -hmm. but on the net all in all, they're almost twice as likely to say that technology and the internet has made their job as parents easier rather than harder. Uh, and th the one interesting thing in terms of uh, how that changes is as their kids get older, they're more likely to say it gets harder. Uh, and I think I have a 15-year-old and I have an 11-year-old and I, I have experienced that myself. So uh, I think we see some of that and, and that also relates to the age of parents. As parents are younger, they tend to have younger kids and tend to be a little bit less, uh, more likely to think it's easier. And the ways that they talk about it being easier is that it helps with homework, uh, it helps their kids find information, it helps their kids be entertained. Um, but on the other side, they talk about the content that they're concerned about and the screen time uh, that they're concerned about. So um, they're aware of the concerns, but net, uh, you know, near, nearly twice as likely to say it makes it easier rather than harder. So are those two elements that you mentioned, content and screen time, the biggest concerns for parents? Well, um, we have, um, I'm going to, I'm going to skip ahead and then I'll okay. go back. Uh, we asked about content and we asked about screen time. And when those are sort of put head to head, parents tell us 64% to 32% that they're more concerned about the content their kids are seeing online versus the time that they're spending online. That does not mean that they aren't concerned about both. Uh, in fact, uh, the majority, 56% uh, and then 42%, 56% um, for the content and 42% for the time, parents are saying, I wish I had more control over what my kids are doing in these areas. So uh, content trumps time spent as a concern, but both of these are issues that parents are dealing with. And two thirds of parents say that they wish they had more control over at least one of these areas, and a third say, I wish I had control, more control over both. So, uh, they're kind of juggling both things, but content is uh, more of a c concern when they're asked specifically. Ultimately, we see technology is just a part of their day-to-day -day lives. I mean, kids have to do their homework online now. So do the benefits outweigh the har harms in terms of what parents see online and technology being online and, and technology in their lives? Well, what we find is that it really depends uh, when you look at different as when they look at different aspects of their children's lives, parents make different determinations. So on the slide here, you can see the bigger the, the deeper the blue and the bigger the circle, those are the things that parents say uh, that the impact's been more positive than negative for their child. So their child using technology has had a much more positive impact on their child's technology skills, on their ability to research and find information, their future career, career skills, their performance in school, their creativity. Those are the ones that come to the top in terms of having the most, the technology having the most positive impact. There are only three where there's a net negative where parents are more likely to say the impact has been more negative than positive. Um, physical activity and fitness of their kids, that's the top. Also their children attention span, there's a, by 12 points they're more likely to say it's a more negative than a positive impact. Uh, and then there are children's ability to interact with, with others in person, um, a, a net negative there by a small point. So it really depends on what parents are thinking about. They make different determinations of the impact. Right, and you also mentioned that parents wish they had a little bit more control over the content and the screen time. Do they overall feel they have a handle on managing and navigating technology in their homes and for their kids? So uh, about 55% uh, of parents told us that they had a high level of confidence in their ability to manage their children technology use, um, but that leaves 45% of parents who don't have that high level of confidence, so um, it does run the gamut somewhat. And as I mentioned before, kind of relating to does it make parenting harder or easier, the older their kids get, and, and thus the older parents get, the more likely, the less likely they are to be confident. So confidence goes down as their children uh, get older. Um, also, uh, um, uh, sorry. I think I skipped ahead of you. That's all right. I thought there was a slide here. That's not good. Okay, sorry. Sorry. <laughs> I was going to ask about 
our kids and the use of technology. They are native users. We were both, you know, we were talking about our kids know how to use technology and fix my phone faster than anyone. Um, Liz's two-year-old can get on the phone and swipe and know she's one of the Comcast people. And so it's one of those things where they're native users. It, I think it's unreasonable or unrealistic to expect that our kids aren't going to use technology or just kind of take it away completely. So what are the ways that we can use it to our benefit to bring families together and, and make it a plus for us? So um, we actually ask parents um, if they think technology, if the impact is, of technology, including the internet, social media, all that, that is included, does that have made communication among their family members better or worse? And by 57 to 13%, parents say it's made communication among their families, among the generations in their families better. So there's clearly a sense it's made, parents think it's made their job as parents easier. They think it's made communication among their family members better. And parents tell us uh, the majority of parents, 54%, are using technology with their kids often. Uh, another third are using it occasionally. So parents are using technology with their children. Um, it's not just something they're only monitoring and, and you know, doing their own thing separately. And also, uh, it's not shown here, but 78% of parents who have an elderly parent or relative told us that their relatives communicate with them using text, uh, email, social media, and other, other technologies. So technology really is connecting generations, and parents are relying on it. Uh, to get in touch with their parents and also to engage with their kids. And if I could add to yeah, that, sure. a, another thing that we asked about, um, both for seniors and for the parent survey is, when there is a problem with technology, when something's not working right, who do you turn to for help? Seniors, by far, their first two choices that they turn to are their adult children and adults in their family and younger people in their family. Um, so there's a connection even when there are problems and issues families can kind of sort of come together to deal with these things. And parents uh, told us that uh, in many cases they will actually send their children to help their own yeah. parents, their help their grandparents deal with technology issues. Um, so I, I think it's easy for us to often talk about the concerns that people have about technology. That's a lot of what's going to be discussed today and, and the problems there are with technology. But there really are, for both parents, kids, and seniors, all three generations, a lot of benefits that people are seeing and by and large are much more likely to see those benefits than the downsides. And anecdotally in the focus groups we heard that uh, grandchildren are bringing their parents online or to use social media and other kinds of, of platforms that they themselves probably wouldn't be gravitating towards on their own. But because of that connection, particularly if their grandchildren live far away, it's providing another way for them to connect. and so. The, the grandchildren are kind of bringing their, their grandparents along to some degree. And that puts the parents in the position of navigating not only their children's use, but assisting their parents uh, to ensure that they can maximize uh, and realize all the benefits while also preventing and minimizing the risks and concerns that they have, which for, parent, for grandparents are you know, around identity theft and those other things we talked about and their concerns for their kids, particularly around content, but also screen time. So. And Jay was talking about some of the differences he found in the demographics for seniors. What about for parents and parenting in this online age? I think the most distinct differences tended to be relating to the age of their child. As I mentioned, that the older their children get, uh, the challenges for parents become more complex. Uh, and we also asked parents, did they think they knew more about technology than their children, and 70% uh, of parents overall said, yes, I know more. Um, but that share is really high when their kids are, you know, elementary and preschool age. It still stays pretty high, but once their children get to be in high school, parents do recognize that, uh, that their knowledge level may not be the same as their, their child. So uh, there are those, those changes that are really uh, most obvious with the age of the child. And that'll continue as your child gets older. Yeah. And then the proportions change. Yes. And I wish we had more time, but I, I, we, you know, you can find more of the research in, in your um, handouts today. But Abigail Davenport and Jay Campbell from Heart Research Associates, thanks so much for that interesting research and for the findings. Um, Thank you. From Thank you. parenting and from seniors. And I am definitely in that position where I'm sandwiched between uh, my kids and my parents trying to, to navigate this technology world. So I appreciate your time. Thank you. Thanks so much. Thank you.